and welcome back to another episode of Last Minute Laura. I'm Laura and today I'm starting another dye experiment. This time it's not so much the dye that I'm experimenting with but rather the method of application onto the wool. So I'm starting with four skeins this time. I'm doing a batch dye which is going to be very exciting. It was recommended by a few of my viewers to do a larger batch dye and I actually have someone who these skeins are for in mind. I'm going to be using sport weight wool, so a one ply um, like a sock weight wool. From Briggs and Little I'm using bleached white for all four skeins. I'm going to tie them up in their hanks with a little bit of tie-dye fabric dyes to try and get some flickering throughout the yarn. I'm also going to be using walnuts again. Walnut season is upon us, friends, so if you see another video with walnuts, click it! I'm going to try something different in each one. Honestly, they're all interesting. Um, but I've got a huge amount of walnuts, probably 10 cups of walnuts, that I smashed out on the driveway in between a couple of pieces of cotton fabric which also made some really beautiful fabric, by the way. And now I've covered it in rainwater and I'm going to add it to the stove. I'm going to simmer it just, just below a simmer for probably two or three hours. I'm just gonna try and get everything that I can out of this dye because I'm not going to be doing a dip dye method this time. Instead, after I wash the yarn and pre-mordant it, I'm going to lay it out and I'm going to do some yarn painting. So this dye needs to be super duper dense. I want to simmer it down until the liquid is even reduced. So it's going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to get that started because it's going to take the longest. And I'm going to put it on the stove on medium to get started and then we'll turn it down to a low medium once the temperature comes up. I also have a second pot on the stove right now, and that one just has some rainwater with some pH neutral dish soap in it. I'm going to be adding the skeins of yarn to there to soak up the soap and get rid of any of the oils left on the actual yarn. But first I have to get them all tie-dyed up so that we've got some cool color variation. Okay, so since I'm gonna be doing some tie-dyeing for this, I thought I'd show you my plan, my method here. So I'm gonna make a tie at the top where the yarn is actually tied together where the skein was like finished. I'm gonna do that on all of them. And this is just gonna be one tie, just one tight tie. I'm also gonna do the same thing at the bottom of each skein. I'm gonna do all four of them the same uh, just in case it changes the entire project. I don't want it to make a project come out weird. So I'm going to do, so I think I'll just use four ties. I cut five, but I think I'll just use four. And I'm tying them really tight just so that they uh, don't let any color in. I want them to stay pretty much white. And I'm just going to do the same thing on all of the skeins. And that will hopefully add at least a little bit of speckling on the wool, that's my hope, by not allowing dye to get in. Also, my um, scouring bath, with the soapy water um, pot, is ready for the wool to go in. So after I tie these, I'm going to just put them in the wool dye pot, the wool wash pot, I should say, and um, let it sit in there half an hour or so just until the water is murky the wool is ready and you can do this with fabric that's like fatter pieces skinnier pieces you can use elastic bands other pieces of yarn and just tie all over the place it's gonna come out interesting and unique every time if you do that so now I've got four skeins ready to go into the scouring bath So right now the walnuts are starting to give off some of that green and brown. So the bubbles look really, honestly it's kind of a pretty green, the bubbles, and the liquid itself looks pretty dark brown. It's already pretty opaque, pretty much totally opaque, and it would definitely stain the yarn already at this point. 
Some parts of me want to take a little bit of the liquid out now and have multiple colors going, but I think I want to get this to go for a while. I want to get it nice and saturated and then I'm going to just let it sit. I think I'm going to let it sit most of the day, honestly, to get some really dark pigment going. But I'll show you in, I don't know, maybe a half, no, an hour. Once I'm washing out the yarn and getting it into its mordant bath, I will show you what the uh, walnuts are looking like. See you then? So it's just a little later now. Um, I left the yarn a little while longer than I had originally intended to, uh, but that's okay. So now I am going to wash the soap out of all the yarn, and then I'm gonna put it back into the bucket uh, pot with some alum powder. I'm gonna do about three tablespoons of alum powder because I'm doing four skeins of yarn today. So first I'm just gonna get all the yarn out, wash it out, and then I'll bring you in for a close-up to see how this walnut dye bath is looking. It's looking amazing, I'm gonna be honest. with a little bit of water because the water was starting to look a little lower um, and I'll bring you in so you can have a look at what it's looking like but now the yarn is gonna need to sit for an hour in that mordant and I'm gonna keep the low 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 simmer going on those walnuts so I'll bring you in for a close-up now look at how dark it is Ooh, so opaque and the walnuts themselves have turned a really deep dark brown which is super but yeah it's totally like really dark chocolatey mucky brown so like i said i'm gonna leave it there for at least a couple more hours just want to see what we can get you know okay friends so it's the end of the day now it's so hot outside and i just went on like a huge foraging expedition with Alex. We collected some mushrooms, a whole bunch of black-eyed Susans, and also some acorns. So those things are coming up in the future for a future dye project, but it's too late in the day for me to start this dye bath. So I'm just turning the heat off on my walnuts. I'm just gonna turn the heat off and leave them in the water soaking all night long, and then tomorrow I'll bring the heat back up and uh, see where we're at color-wise. I am gonna wash the yarn out so it's not sitting in the alum all night, and I'm just gonna let it uh, sit out to dry, and then we'll add it to the dye pot in the morning or whatever we're gonna do to make some magical color on that yarn. So stay tuned, but I'll give you a little close-up of what the uh, dye liquid is looking like, and then I'm gonna wash out the um, alum out of the yarn. Okay, so you can see the liquid is Ooh, we're losing the camera. The walnut hulls are pretty much black, which is great. I'm happy about that. So we've got one color pretty much done, I think. This is just gonna sit overnight in its juices. Let anything else leach out that wants to. Let any oxidization occur that's wanting to occur. And we'll deal with that in the morning. <laughs> It's the next day now, by the way, and I'm thinking I want to do like a third of the skein dip dyed, but in a weak dye bath. So I want to start doing some kind of ombre painted yarn, but I think the base I want to start with is like one third brown and then like one third and I don't know. The first third I've sorted out. I want to do it in brown for the first third. So what I'm going to do to get myself set up for that is I'm going to take maybe two cups of the top liquid from yesterday's dye bath, which is pretty dark, but I'm just gonna dilute two cups of it. Okay, so I just made, filled the water up about there, and now what I wanna do is just dip the yarn in for, I don't know, 
maybe a minute. I just want to get whatever colors on there just to start. Maybe not even a minute. Maybe I'll start really light. And then I'm going to pull it out and spread it back on the towel here. There we go. One side has just a teeny bit of creamy brown and the other side has like a little more. And that's a good base, I think. Now what I'm gonna do is grab a couple of um, walnuts from outside and I'm just gonna start positioning them on the wool in a, in a bunch of spots in order to try and get some weird speckles. well and looking pretty dark. I think I'm going to start using some of this dye liquid but I want to pass it through a strainer first um, because it was a little bit thick um, when I put it on the yarn a minute ago. So I'm going to get a strainer. Now I'm just going to ladle some of that dye liquid into this strainer to have it strain. yellow is totally working which is very good and now what I want to do is get something to put this on onto the yarn with. I think a spray bottle is going to be my best bet. So pretty, so dark brown. Alright, rinse off that outside. And now I'm going to use this to darken, I think, maybe a band in the middle of all of them. I think this will work. I feel pretty cool about it. Maybe like around these ties, I'll darken that area. Yeah, it's totally working. And then I think I'll do another little speckle of this just on one side near the bottom. And now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get another spray bottle just with um, some water in it to do around the acorns again. Okay, I'm just gonna leave the skeins like this for a little while, uh, maybe an hour, just to see if any can get anything to happen that's extra cool with these walnuts as they oxidize on the wool. I'm hoping we'll get some kinds of yellows and oranges going on. It looks like a few of the a few of them have some yellow happening. So I'm hopeful that that'll keep, keep on going. And then we'll see in, like I said, about an hour how these colors are looking and then maybe we'll flip the skein over and do some spraying in some other spots. After everything is added color-wise, we're going to do some after, after effect baths as well with iron and with wood ash water. I, basically, I wanna make this like a brown rainbow. My extra gene is calling to me right now though and I'm feeling like I want to do a few more drips with this liquid that we have right now. So I think I'm going to do that. Just some drips on the top. Like that. Just dripping it along. Not totally only in where the brown is either. I'm doing it into the white as well. There, that might just darken it up a little more. All right, I'm gonna give it an hour and we'll come back and see what it looks like in an hour. Okay, so it's been an hour now and I'm thinking we should flip over the yarn and basically reposition everything. I don't know how the walnuts will go. I think they'll just get new spots. Okay, I'm gonna just flip it so that we can get the other sides dyed really cool. That should do it. And 
now I'm going to strain out more of the dye liquid to start a dip dye part portion of this dye bath extravaganza. <laughs> I'm just going to soak these in there for, I think, about an hour, and then we'll see what happens. I'm going to spray the sides down with water just to allow the osmosis to happen on this side a little bit easier. And we'll see what we've got in, like I said, about an hour. Okay, so it's been another hour now, and I just came back to a big mess in my dye kitchen. The water moved from the wool all the way into the towel from inside of this container. I should have known that that would happen, but I completely didn't. So I'm just going to grab these skeins and put them, hang them on this pot, letting the walnuts fall off there. And then I'm going to collect the walnuts. This is almost empty now. Do you remember it was full when I just set it up a minute ago or an hour ago. A little bit of a mess to deal with. Good thing we have that towel though, because without that towel, it would have all ended up on the floor. This towel was white. <laughs> it is not white any longer, but that's okay, because we are making dye. Hold on, I need to go get another towel. Okay, so now I am going to use some containers to do the rest of the dyeing so that we don't have that happen again. Got these two, and we'll just hang these that is all wet. Now my feet are wet. There we go. Now we got all four of these in here. That looks like a really pretty color. So I'm happy about that. Picked up a lot of the orange tones. And now I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do some more straining and then some more spraying. <laughs> spraying on this side, maybe even a little just throughout here. Okay, and now I'm going to take a little bit of wood ash solution. I'm just going to modify some of this middle section here. And while that is sitting there, I'm going to get my iron water. I'm going to do a little drip of iron water on here to turn some parts black. I'm just gonna flip this over so I can do the same thing on the other side. So far it's looking pretty magical, if I do say so myself. And then I'm going to take some of the iron water solution I'm gonna mix it in to my dye bath spray here to make a really dark dye. Again, I'm not really planning here. I'm just sort of seeing what looks nice and going with it. Okay, so there's another round of color adding. We'll see what that's looking like in another hour. Alrighty. So I've got some pretty cool stuff going on in the color realm here, but I want to tie up my skeins so that I don't get too much more bleeding going. I feel like it's a little bit close to turning into a, um, what would you even call it, an ombre skein, and that's not what I'm looking for per se. I'm kind of more looking for something else. Okay, so that's good. And now I think I wanna make this portion a little darker. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the remaining dye bath and add it underneath here. And just let that middle section soak in it. And anywhere where there was iron should get a different color, which I think will be great. Zone. I'm going to take my 
my iron water mix and I'm going to do a few more little dots. Okay, now we'll let that sit for a little while. Hopefully get a little darker. It's the next day now, and I tied these things up overnight. Um, so now we're on day three of this project. It's getting a little bit messy, so I'm gonna have to clean up the kitchen today for sure. But I think I'm gonna wash the skeins out at this point, just to um, dry them and see where we're at in terms of color. I'm really liking the different browns that I'm seeing, but I wanna see what it looks like after I can get a good rinse on it. So I'm gonna rinse out these skeins now. First, I'm just gonna free them from their ties and see what we're working with. Okay, friends, so if you remember, we started with Briggs and Little bleached white uh, sport weight wool, and this is the custom dye job. And look at how they finished. Let me just bring them all out so you could see in all of their glory. I love this. I love this so much. It makes me like squee is like the word that comes to mind. It is the most beautiful mix of tones I think I've ever put together. It's my first real colorway. Up until now, I've just been mixing um, one ingredient for every skein and making maybe two colors. This has a full rainbow of brown and gray and cream tones throughout it. I am totally obsessed. So. I made this one for Kayla. We have a live stream community now. If you're interested in the live stream, check it out, I'll link it below. Um, but we have a bit of a community going now and one of the members in the community, Kayla, she requested a sweater weight, a sweater quantity of custom dyed yarn and she said she loves browns. So I thought, well, I have to use my black walnuts because I'm so obsessed with them right now. And she actually has a sheep that is all of these colors and his name is Barry. So we ended up naming this colorway on the live stream and we named it Barry. So unfortunately these ones will not be available because they are getting shipped to their new home this weekend probably. And the colorway is called Barry. What do you think? Do you love these? I'm so, I'm so happy with how they turned out honestly. Like I'm glad I don't have to ship them until Monday, actually. We talked about it Monday, um, because I do wanna just stare at them all weekend long. I'm just gonna keep them on my desk so I can look at these amazing orange tones. Look at how amazing that is next to the white. Oh my God, it's like next level. It's like a real live colorway. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I hope that she loves it. I'm not gonna lie, she already saw them and she said she loves it, but I also love it. Oh, geez Louise, look how pretty they are. Oh, I'm just gonna undo one of them so you can see how it kind of transitions. All four are the same, I just twisted them up differently. Um, but I've got some little orange specks where I included the um, wood ash solution. And then we've got that beautiful brown where it was pre-mordanted in alum. And then there's some darker gray areas where I added iron to the skein and that kind of desaturated the brown so that it's a bit more in the gray family. And then I tied off some areas to keep that light creamy color showing up in certain spots of the skein. So the whole skein has like a rainbow of browns. It's gonna make the most beautiful sweater. I can't wait to see her make something amazing out of this. So, like I said, let me know what you think. And hey, if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. I put out new videos every single day. That's right, I said it, every day. I actually put out eight videos a week, if you can believe it. Monday to Friday, I live stream, and then Tuesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, I come out with edited videos like this. So if you're interested in natural dyeing, foraging, handmade everything, crochet, all of the above, definitely subscribe to the channel and leave a comment letting me know if you're new. I love 
having all of you here. I love that I have this opportunity to share some of my experiments and some of my beautiful things with you, and I hope you like it too. Anyway, friends, that's all I've got for today. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.